Hi, I'm the Tabletop Teacher, and in this video we're unboxing the second half of our Marvel Heroclix Captain America and the Avengers Boosters brick that the great folks at Wiskins sent us for us to preview. Let's get right into it. In the sixth booster, we pull Happy Hogan, Sidewinder, Captain America, Citizen V, and a rare Hawkeye. Gotta love a character that starts with a 12 attack value, 7 range, and 3 targets. On top of that, his no tricks tactical trait grants him precision strike that he can use on more than one target. Same goes for range combat expert. He starts with a special speed power that grants him running shot, sidestep, and stealth. If he has a couple of characters with the shield team ability, and you'll find several in this set, you could boost range and damage and seriously hurt your opponent's characters, or just use incapacitate and lock him down. Oh, and he also has the Assembled Avengers trait we've seen on other figures so far. Willpower, but no damage reducer on his defense makes him a prime target for your opponent, though. Make sure to protect him, and he should be very useful. In the seventh booster, we get Maria Hill, Peggy Carter, Winter Soldier, another uncommon wasp, and a super rare Baron Zemo. Wow. Not sure you have enough Thunderbolts to make a theme team? Well, Baron Zemo's first trait lets you treat Masters of Evil and Thunderbolts as a single named keyword. That gives you a lot of options as several of these characters have been available in the past few sets. He has the Assembled Bolts and Masters trait we've seen before. His special damage power grants him outwit and leadership with an extra effect on a successful leadership role. Baron Zemo gets to choose any Marvel team ability as long as it's not uncopyable, and then all friendly characters with the Thunderbolts or Masters of Evil keyword can use that team ability until he chooses again, meaning another successful leadership role. Your opponent has a lot of stealth? Well, Avengers Initiative could be nice. One of your characters is about to be knocked out and the others need a little bit of healing? Well, Fantastic Four seems like a great choice now. Lots of nice options to choose from. His special speed power gives you one of the most important options, charge or running shot with stealth. He starts with Mastermind, so you'll want to pair him with a character that's going to take the damage for him. Indomitable, 5 range, 6 clicks, and very decent combat values for 65 or 45 points. Can't wait to build a force around him. In the 8th booster, we find another shield officer, glad to have a couple of these. Peggy Carter again, another nuke clone, Roz Solomon, and a rare Iron Man. This is the stealthy, long-range version of the shifting focus Iron Man we've seen in this set. He has a range of 9. The common version we saw earlier was a charged super strength variant. They have the assembled Avengers trait we've seen before, but the nice addition to shifting focus here is the variable weapon system trait. This lets you choose a standard power that's printed on the card, it doesn't need to be visible on the dial, but on the card of another Iron Man on your sideline that has the same shifting focus trait. That free action to pick a power is going to make Iron Man super versatile. 75 points, indomitable, yes please, I want all the versions of this guy. In the ninth booster, we pull Nick Fury, Quake, Spy Master, his gun fell off in chipping, but again, that can be easily fixed, Victor Mancha again, and a rare Radioactive Man, cool. Another Thunderbolt slash Master of Evil for Baron Zemo to build with. He's impervious or invulnerable on his first clicks, whether you play him at 85 or 50 points, which makes him an interesting choice to tag along with Zemo. Opposing characters will suffer a minus two to attack when using Energy Explosion or Quake against him, which gives Baron Zemo more protection since these two attacks are mastermind busters, if you will. And opposing characters within three squares modify damage minus one when making close attacks. Again, good for Zemo as well if Radioactive Man is adjacent. He can, of course, be used for much more than Zemo's bodyguard. He starts with exploit weakness and either super strength or poison, its chance to regenerate on the last click. I like it. And in the last booster, we find commons and uncommons we've seen with, ooh, a super rare Arno Stark. He can be played at 90 or 60 points and starts with the same power combo either way. His special speed power grants him sidestep and a very powerful range attack. Arno Stark will have to be immobile until your next turn in order to use it though. That's the trade-off. But here's what you get. His lines of fire can't be blocked by characters, nor elevated terrain, nor outdoor blocking terrain, and can't be hindered either. With a range of 12, might as well say he ignores the map. 
When Arno Stark makes that specific range attack, all opposing characters within range and line of fire become targets, so no way to avoid this with shape change. And each hit target is dealt one penetrating damage instead of normal damage. On an outdoor map, this can be brutal against swarm teams that can't reduce penetrating damage. Speaking of which, Arno Stark has Invincible with the added possibility of taking no damage at all if you roll a 5 or a 6. Kind of like a mix of Impervious and Invincible. Impervisible. Very resistant. Well, that was a very nice brick. There's a lot of fun to be had with this set, and at first glance, it seems to open up a lot of options for theme teams we don't see very often. Definitely worth a case, in my opinion. Share your thoughts in the comments below. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and support it on Patreon. And as always, thanks for unboxing with me.